Mario Andretti recently announced that his son, Michael, had submitted papers to the FIA in a bid to enter his own Formula One team for the 2024 season. Whether or not this actually happens remains to be seen, as the FIA currently aren't looking for new teams to join the sport, so they could just flat reject them. More on that later. Regardless, this news has seen the Andretti Autosport name thrust into the limelight once again. Now, the intended entry is actually called Andretti Global, but it is a race team owned by Michael Andretti, so really, it's still kind of spiritually Andretti Autosport. This isn't the first time the Andretti team name has surfaced in the Formula One news cycle in recent times. In October of 2021, the racing world watched with a keen eye as Michael Andretti engaged in talks with Sauber over a deal that would have seen the former walk away with an 80% stake in the latter. However, that deal eventually fell through. I understand, however, that not every Formula One fan would see the full significance of Andretti of all teams making their Formula One debut. Sure, a new F1 team is a big deal, and of course, most fans will already know who Mario Andretti is. But what's the deal with this team? Here's everything you need to know about Andretti Autosport and the organization that could be responsible for getting a new team onto the Formula One grid. In order to talk about Andretti Autosport's story in Formula One, we first need to start in the American American open wheel racing scene. In 2003, Michael Andretti, as previously stated, the son of legendary American racing driver Mario Andretti and racing driver himself, purchased a majority stake in a kart team called Team Green. Now, for those of you who don't know, between the mid 1990s and the early 2000s, IndyCar history became very confusing and probably deserves a video on its own. To compare the situation to the film industry, Industry, Kart was the X-Men and IndyCar was the MCU. Anyway, the newly formed Andretti Green outfit made the switch from Kart to the newly formed IndyCar series, formerly called the Indy Racing League, until the organizers obtained the rights to use the IndyCar series name instead of, ah, stuff it, no more Kart history. Anyway, despite the fact that the team technically already had a history in Kart and the Indy Racing League, the new Andretti guys made their debut at the opening round of the 2003 IndyCar series at Homestead Miami Speed. Way. They brought three cars to the event. Car number 11 was driven by Tony Kanaan, car number 7 was driven by now majority stake team owner Michael Andretti, and car number 27 was driven by Dario Franchitti. The trio finished 4th, 6th, and 7th respectively. Not bad for a debut race. However, at the next race at Phoenix, Kanaan took home the win. And that was really a sign of things to come for Andretti as a team owner. In 2004, Tony Kanaan won the championship for the team, and Dan Weldon won it in 2005 along with the Indy 500. Since then, the team has become an absolute powerhouse in both American motorsport and motorsport across the world. The team was renamed Andretti Autosport after Michael Andretti took over the team outright in 2009. Under the guises of Andretti Green, Andretti Autosport, as well as joint operations such as Walkinshaw Andretti United, this team has found success in a multitude of racing categories including IndyCar, sports car racing, Formula E, Extreme E, Rallycross, Supercars and more. As a team owner, Andretti has four IndyCar championships to his name, as well as five Indy 500 wins. The team has also won three Global Rallycross championships, seven Formula E races, the LMP2 class at the 12 Hours of Sebring, and even the Bathurst 1000, recently under the Walkinshaw Andretti United banner. It doesn't stop there, of course, but at this rate, we'd be here all day. And that leads us to the present. Andretti, one of the biggest team names in the world of motorsport outside of Formula One, if all somehow goes well, could be making their debut in the most high-profile racing series in the world. Let's take a look at the situation. As a few publications have already pointed out, 
And as I'm sure a few of you are probably thinking yourselves, this may be an excellent time for Andretti to enter Formula One should this actually work out. F1 is looking to expand its presence in the United States, and they're already making moves to do so. In 2022, the F1 circus will be heading for the first time to the Miami International Autodrome, and will once again be heading back to Circuit of the Americas as per usual. F1 are also looking at running a race in Las Vegas of all places. Furthermore, Drive to Survive across the world and indeed in the United States has already done wonders in boosting the popularity of the series. Another American team, especially with a name as big as Andretti, would certainly contribute to the gradual rise of the sport stateside. Sure, Haas are of course an American team, but surely if the controlling interests intend to build a stronger fan base in America, the more US teams on the grid, the better. Just think about how many UK based teams there already are. It would also probably do wonders if an American team such as Andretti were to field an American driver. Colton Herter's name, naturally, is already being thrown around. If you don't know who Colton Herter is, he races for Andretti in IndyCar and he's probably one of the biggest young talents in the States right now. Actually, I really hope it's my usual fan base watching this video because there are only so many IndyCar bad comments that I can sift through. Now, it's no secret that Andretti initially tried to take over an existing team before eventually trying their hand at creating their own team. In fact, along with Alfa Romeo, Talks with Haas were apparently on the table briefly before those were eventually binned as well. So Michael Andretti is looking to start his own Formula One team. It is, however, quite difficult to actually enter a Formula One team these days. As we stated earlier, Andretti could just simply be rejected. Not only is the FIA not looking for new teams at the moment, but it also wouldn't be the first time that they've shut down a prospective F1 entry. In 2010, of the 15 teams that applied for entry, a new F1 team, only three were accepted. Furthermore, the new Concord Agreement, put into effect in 2021, requires new teams to pay $200 million that is then distributed among the existing teams to compensate for the fact that F1's revenue is being distributed among 11 teams instead of 10 teams. There's 200 million deterrents right there. However, if the team does make it, as we said before, this team would be called Andretti global, although spiritually it's Andretti Autosport. The team would be based in England, however, the cars would be built in a yet-to-be-constructed facility in Indianapolis, located near Andretti Autosport's IndyCar and Indy Lights operations. So how might this team do? Well, it should be noted that while Andretti Autosport's illustrious list of achievements in other series is very impressive, Success in one racing series is not necessarily indicative of success in another. For instance, Stuart Haas Racing, decent cup series team and, uh, mixed results in Formula One. Same goes for Carlin, championship winning feeder series team, extraordinarily mediocre IndyCar team that was actually wrapped up in one of the most embarrassing blunders in the recent history of the Indy 500. Check out my Fernando Alonso video for more details on that. That being said, Andretti seems to have found a lot of success in a wide variety of racing series and with the correct resources, the right people and the right amount of money, they might be able to repeat their success in Formula One. But what do you think about all of this? Will Andretti actually make the field? And if they do, will they find success or will they flop? Comment below, I actually do read all of the comments and I will most likely respond to you so you may as well say something and also all of your lovely comments actually helps the channel grow as does liking and subscribing all of which would be very much appreciated. You know the drill with the socials by now and until next time, goodbye.